Ah, it's a beautiful day finally in New York. Just a little cold over at X Joe 81X's house. Nice day, guys out walking. Big Six's brother here and the Big Six itself. What happens when it's a nice day and you're Chitalian? Gotta make some noise. So over here, we got the plumber's butt crack going on. <laughs> Joe is taking a look at the remote start on this car because his does not seem to have that. Now it was an option and he has a video already that shows exactly how to get the panels off down below that is what he's doing right now on mine and we're just going to take a look in there just to see he'll know what's different if anything shouldn't really be anything if you remember from previous videos his seems to be like a mid-year 07 where mine is the original 07 and uh, there were some very minor differences in it such as the tow hook port on the front which mine doesn't have so there's the panel out underneath and we'll get in there in a little bit I let him use his drill to take it out, but everything's going back by hand because can't be too rambunctious. All sorts of stuff underneath panels and all kinds of great, wonderful stuff that has to come out. And what is that? The lower airbag. The lower, I didn't know it even had that. You do not disconnect it and you be careful because it's the sharp. So we go to shaky cam mode. And yeah, it's that's a lower airbag, all right. I didn't even know it had that. Not thrilled about it, but whatever, it's there. What's wrong? Uh, nothing. Oh, you're not thrilled with the airbag hitting your knees? Yeah, I'm just not thrilled with it being there. It's just another thing you don't fucking need. There's all sorts of connectors and wiring blocks and all sorts of crazy shit. Maybe some relays or something, the blue things and the black thing. That's a bundle of fucking wires there. That's terrible. What I did notice is I'm not going to drop your ignition cylinder plastic because that's fragile and there's nothing in there that my video won't show um, because I can drop it, but you'd have to turn the wheel and take the Phillips off and I don't Right, do it's that. a whole, yeah. It's fine. But you will know that the ignition wire comes down, makes a sharp right and goes behind the center console. That's where I think your automatic start goes into behind the glove box hmm. closer to the radio it has to be in there <laughs> if it's starting the car from the factory something has to be connected on the other side so there's not much to see except internal car stuff uh, I already can tell this is ten times more complex than old clanky was which is ridiculous uh, I couldn't even imagine this being an 07 what cars today would even be like it's ridiculous it's almost like on that stupid car shield commercial where the guy's like have you seen under the hood of a car today it's like a rolling computer well it was here and then now so yeah another thing that Joe pointed out worth mentioning is this is the floor vent for the air he says that in his car it's white plastic and this is black Huh. I don't know why. It just is. Another thing worth mentioning is this little white tube looking thing. It's actually just wire loom. But if you look at it, you see that? If you look close in there, that is a thermistor. That's what it's called? A thermistor? Yep. And I that's what senses the temperature in the car. In that panel down there, there's three little vent slots there to allow air in. And that's how it knows what the temperature in the car is. So that's good to know that's there just as such. You could actually heat it with a hairdryer or something if you had to force the system to do something. Although there's supposed to be scan tools that can actuate all the stuff, but just interesting. So as was pretty much to be expected, there was really nothing to see over here. So the elusive remote start module was not there on this car either. 
that leaves two other places behind the radio which we're not doing in the center console or under here and it's probably not there either it's probably behind the radio somewhere but we're gonna pull the panel here and take a peek in there as well and uh, while we're at it we'll just have a quick peek at the cabin air filter because that's kinda coming out along with it now the glove box You pop the little thing off that little tab there that dampens the opening and then you got to kind of bend it out and then it falls out of the way. It's the same problem with mine, yeah? And one at a time. Yep. Just to find out there's nothing Which often here. makes me wonder, all these places you bring your car into, Oh, um, you should get your cabin air filter replaced. Do you think they actually go through this? I don't think so. No, Not a lot was, of times. Mine was deteriorated. And it never was changed. Right, yeah, of course. There it is, that blue label. Remote EG starter. Something is not enough light. ECU. And a part number. That's where it lives, right next to the cabin air filter. So while we're here, we'll take a peek at that. I don't know what you can see, but there are some little goodies up there. So I'm gonna pull that. And I need two hands to get in there, I think, yeah. Uh, I don't like seeing that, but a couple little leaves. This was always crunched there. From Revo America, Texas, that's it. Joe got a delivery in for an upcoming Chitalian project. So, yeah, that's really all there is to see. Got some pieces, huh? Yeah, I do. That was all the stuff that was in the filter. It was always pinched that way, so that's how it's going back. I don't know what that other foam was. It's not the ends of this thing. It's dirty, it could use change, but it's not horrible. The air still works well. A couple little dust pieces in that. Eh, something to think about. Not time yet, but soon enough. Maybe it was crunched in the box. I don't know, but that's how it's been. This is the dampening device. Hooks on there for the glove box. Put the cabin air filter back in. That's good for another 50,000 miles or so. And uh, I actually have a spare and could change it, but I don't have it with me. It doesn't need change right now, really. Another little interesting design change that we just found. Take a look at this cap. This is on my car. The outlet goes out to the side if it overflows. And over here is totally different. This goes in, goes down, and then it shoots out. I'm not gonna pull it off, but it actually has a right angle and shoots out right in that gap there. So it doesn't just shoot on the engine, I guess. They felt it was necessary to change that for one reason or another. So there's two little plastic tabs. I don't think they're broken. There's like a little indentation. Oh, and it just sits on that. And it just goes, slides on. The thing was, well, just the, loose the in there. Are in the way. So now it goes on like that. So gravity is holding it in. So that is there. I don't know. I don't know if you want to try to even pull it, but his is in there a lot tighter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same concept, just needs a little bit more help. <laughs> It's interesting. A, here's Joe's new radiator. There you go, hon, hon, hon. I don't know why he's Italianoing. So, yeah, a couple little minor stupid design differences. He got his radiator changed and we just popped the cap to look, so it dripped a little, but that's normal. And uh, that's it. I don't know. It just is. He, of course, got in here. I got in there with a rag and I cleaned all the things because. 
somebody might look under the hood. It's got to be clean, you know, got to be sharp. These are a lot shinier than mine are. They're pretty faded. Yes, I have the lights on. I know that. These are actually HIV bulbs. I think the video's live, but that's a lot of wiring and crazy shits. These were a bitch to get in. They're not bad. The LEDs for me really work fine, but whatever. They're there. They work. It's not hot, so that's good. This popped out. It should pop right back in. Should is the operative word. Italiano. When in doubt, rub it out. Alright, good. Okay. Oh, well, good for him. So you'll go through that. So roll back together. These are the little vents I was talking about before where that sensor is inside. And uh, we put the glove box back and I put the cabin air filter back, of course. And now I had to move all the seats around because they didn't need to be moved in the first place. So now everything's back just about how it should. You ever notice how when you move your seat or maybe you have a spouse that moves the seat because they can't reach the pedals or something like that, you can never get it back exactly where you had it. It's always off just a millimeter. Yeah, and then you deal with that the next four times you drive. In Joe's car is an empty hole. Yep, just an empty hole. Unfortunately, it's not just a let me get one out of a junked one and plug it in. You got to go to Toyota for that, for the car to be reprogrammed. And God only knows how the fuck that's ever going to work if they even still know how to do that on an 07. White plastic or gray. But uh, yeah, they changed that too. Mine was black. Okay, just is. One other thing I had noticed on my car... That shouldn't be that way. That shouldn't be like that. Because it's not here. And I know exactly what the problem was when we had installed this backup camera. This plastic piece has like four bolts on it. And one of them here was broken off. The tab was broken. So chances are good on mine, the tab there is broken. So one of these years I'll have to not fix that. So we have our uh, old car marathon for sale signs up. <laughs> and uh, I've been getting a lot of comments recently on one of my Whirlpool uh, disabling the lid switch video. Uh, a kid could fall in there and, and drown. Uh, uh, this and that. It's a bad practice to disable that. And I said, well, what about your car? Sometimes the mechanic has to work under the hood with the engine running. There's belts down here. He could get his finger caught in that and lose a finger easily. The fans could turn on and he could get hurt. Uh, all, all kinds of great stuff can happen. I said, it's okay to disable that as long as you're cautious. So, yeah, we're cautious. <laughs> we're actually setting up for a video that Joe's going to record right now and the screwdriver is in here to hit the switch for the hood that's in here because my car has a remote start and it works and we're going to start both cars so we'll start this one remotely and obviously I'll have to go in Joe's car and manually hit the button <laughs> isn't there a phone app for that like OMG so anyway that's what this is so that's why the screwdriver is there but like I was saying with the video the lid switch disable sometimes you have to work on it with power on sometimes it's got to be running for you to see what's going on what do you do for safety then 
you have to provide it. It's that simple. So anyway, that's going to wrap this series up. We found the elusive remote start uh, module. Not that it makes any difference because you can't just unplug it from here and plug it in the other car. It just doesn't work that way. So we'll see whatever happens with that. But that's going to wrap this one up. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you click like. Make sure you click subscribe and take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.